Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing marvelously well. This is going to be a fun episode. We went over to Dave Way's studio, The Way Station, which he recently outfitted with KRK monitors for a full blown Atmos room. We've talked about Atmos a couple of times on the channel, but this is the first time we've actually gone to sit in a room with Atmos. And Dave is going to explain how he set it up, how it works, and how he mixes in Atmos. It's been a bit of a buzzword over the last couple of years, and I think that Atmos is going to be something that's really going to change things for us because it truly is a way of working in full blown, real surround. Especially when you think about how everybody's going to be playing games now in a virtual world. My son has, you know, the virtual headset, the headphones on and everything, and the fact that you can hear sound all around you now is completely revolutionary when you think of where we came from. We came from mono AM radios, you know, with single mono earbuds to stereo to 5.1 to now something that truly is as the catchword is, and I haven't said it yet, immersive. So I'm quite excited to show you this video. So stick around and watch Mr. Dave Way tell us about his Atmos room and how he works in it. Hey troops, how are you? This is Dave Way at the Way Station once more. And today I was going to show you a bit about Dolby Atmos, mixing in Atmos because it is the coolest, newest, most exciting way of mixing in surround. Basically the rundown on Atmos is, as opposed to 5.1, which was kind of what was the, the surround format for quite a while, Dolby Atmos is... Um, it's, it's no definitive number of speakers. What Dolby Atmos uh, does is create a 360 degree field space for you to work in and uh, you move things around as you want to and it then looks at whatever the playback system that someone has uh, is made of, how many speakers they have, and it translates that into their speaker system. Um, and that can be anything from uh, a sound bar um, that you can buy at Best Buy for whatever, $1,500, $2,000, and it has multiple speakers on it, and it throws the sound all around. On that lower side is also like the Amazon Echo, which is just a single speaker that throws sound around. Um, but then on the other side is like a, you know, a, a Dolby Atmos equipped movie theater uh, that has you know, could have 40 speakers uh, all along the sides and on top. But right here at Waystation, we have a 7.1.4 setup. And what that means is seven, which is my left, center, right, two side speakers, two back speakers. Uh, that's the seven. Point one for the subwoofer. And then point 0.4, because I've got four speakers above me, two here kind of in front of me and two behind me. So 7.1.4, and that's kind of the basic, probably minimum amount of speakers you want to have if you're actually mixing in, in Atmos. As opposed to 5.1, the, the thing about Atmos is you really do feel immersed in it. And this is primarily because you've now got side speakers and above speakers. It's hard to describe, and it'll be hard to actually translate this in this little demonstration because you're ultimately gonna be listening in stereo and on your computer and, you know, maybe in headphones, but it won't be, uh, uh, you know, this immersive environment. Uh, because I'm telling you, once you hear something in Atmos, going back to stereo is, is very disappointing. Um, it takes, it takes a while to go from Atmos back to stereo, but then what's nice is then when you go from stereo back to Atmos again, it's like, yay, I'll be mixing in Pro Tools as I normally do, uh, except we're going to send the outputs from Pro Tools 
into the Dolby Atmos renderer, which I have on this screen here. And that does all the math and all the processing. We are sending from uh, the renderer into the Focusrite converters, and then th that feeds the speakers. And then the speakers are controlled by a Focusrite monitor control where I'm basically turning up uh, the output of the converters, which are feeding the speakers. So that's my volume control, is basically turning the converters up and down. Uh, and then I've got multiple uh, input sources, so I can just have my stereo Pro Tools uh, at the touch of a button. I can have the Dolby renderer in 7.1.4. I also have a Dolby Atmos receiver that I can stream uh, the, I don't even know how many titles they have on Tidal now, but uh, there are thousands, I'm guessing, of Atmos mixes that you can uh, stream on Tidal. That's T-I-D-A-L, you know, the streaming system like Spotify. Tidal has uh, a whole, whole bunch of great stuff. Uh, Amazon also does. At the moment, it's only available through uh, their Amazon Echo, but that will be changing, I think, pretty soon where it'll just be you know, part of their regular streaming service. And then uh, it sounds like uh, iTunes will be uh, streaming Atmos soon also. Setting up for Atmos, you need a lot of speakers. That can be intimidating on your pocketbook, uh, you know, in your checkbook. But um, I got to say, I've been using and, and a big fan of the KRK V series, the, the latest V series uh, came out a few years ago. And I've been using V8s, and so when I decided to do uh, an Atmos setup here, I very I immediately knew that I wanted to do it with KRKs. So I've got uh, seven V8s uh, uh, along the, the the front and sides and back, and then I've got a little bit smaller the V6s up above me. And uh, you know the the great thing I, I love the sound of the KRKs. Uh, and the translation, they really, really work for me. Uh, I've been very happy with them for a few years, but, uh, and they sound fantastic in an Atmos setup. Um, but the great thing about them is they're not hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, <laughs> which is uh, some speakers are. And, you know, speakers, speakers are a, a, a personal choice. You got to find what works for you. But um, this works for me and it's not crazy expensive. So, uh, it, it enabled me to, to make this, this move. I'm very happy with it. KRK stuff is, is, is everybody who comes in here and has a listen is just, just been, you know, kind of blown away and immediately want to go out and get their own Atmos set up. By the way, you'll be listening because obviously you don't have Adobe Atmos playback system to listen to, and we don't have a way of getting that full signal to you. You're just going to be hearing a binaural representation of the Atmos. Uh, fold down. It's not full blown, full blown Atmos, but uh, you'll you'll hear some 3D spaciousness to it. You'll see over here on the left we've got 128 what they call objects, and the first 10 of which are being used for what we call the bed. In this case, it's 10 because we've got 7.1.2. We don't have the point 0.4 in the bed, just point 0.2. For the point 0.4, meaning four speakers above, front, top, and back top, we use objects to be able to move things back and forth in between the top front and top back, so everywhere in between there. If we've just got point 0.2, we've just basically got hard left and right above us without any kind of differentiation between front and rear. So we've got the first 10 for the bed, and then we've got 118 other spare objects that we can use however we want. But each one of those objects is panable and uh, automatable. This is uh, a song called Too Far Gone by a band named A Bad Think. You'll hear a little bit of that in a second. But I've got you know, a regular session here, but rather than bussing everything to a stereo, left and right, uh, I'm putting things into a 7.1.2 bed or uh, objects, which then can be placed anywhere in 
360 uh, field. So if I pull up this panner monitor here, you can see I can move things left, right, uh, front, rear. Sorry, here's uh, left, right. So, and I can do that on my controller here like that. And that enables me to get basically anywhere in the 360 field to continue with the renderer. So there's all of our objects there. Here's our meters for our bed. You see right here, we've got basically it's a box, a three dimensional box that represents the you know room. So if I play with this, you see all these dots and you'll see our meters going. You'll see things moving around. Green dots that have spheres around them. Basically what, what all those green dots are, are objects. And in this case, we're using a lot of objects. They're not all moving. Some of them are static. And uh, part of that is because in addition to our 7.1 bed here, a uh, 7.1.2 bed, we've got what Steve Jenowick and I like to refer to as zones. Now, Steve has been a big help to me with uh, getting into Atmos. He's, he's one of the fathers of Atmos here. He's been, he's, I don't know, even know how many mixes he's done, but he's done plenty. So he kind of helped me out uh, and showed me this, this way of doing things where he's got zones that are objects so this will be left top, right top, the front, which is basically just left and right, center, side, kind of forward, side in the back, rear, all the way in the back, high front, high back, and high center. It just makes it easy to place things by throwing it into this bus, basically. Let me play you a little something, and I'll show you kind of what uh, some of these meters and things start to look like, and I can explain a little bit. So here's uh, a solo track, and I recorded it uh, binaurally with a binaural head. So this is a stereo track. So. Gonna just move this stuff around. Bottom. That's in the middle. Let's try this track here. Yeah, okay, so. Uh, so I'm kind of moving that a bit of, in a circle. And then and I can also go up. Right? Fun. you have headphones on, you should be feeling this going around you a bit. When you're in the speakers, it's really pretty dramatic because you're actually pinpointing all these things. For anybody who hasn't actually heard an Atmos mix, it really is something, it's, it is a big, big step up from just 5.1. Uh, and it mainly has to do with the side speakers and the height speakers. You know, with 5.1, we basically had in our you know, in front of us and then in back of us with shades in between. But uh, having stuff up there and stuff directly in your side speakers, the detail in between front to back is really something. And then being able to hear things from anywhere above you. It can be subtle. It can be very dramatic. Um, 
it's it's whatever you want it to be. It's just basically a big panner that you can do anything that you want. It's the Wild West. So what you're hearing, because we can't give you a full Atmos signal, and you don't have a probably don't have an Atmos playback system on your side. What you're hearing is a binaural representation, a binaural fold down, basically. So we've got the bed, and then any of the objects can be represented binaurally in three different ways. This is what we call the binaural settings. You'll see I've got my first 10 set for the bed, right? Now here it says binaural setting. I can either have off, near, mid, or far, right? So for the main stuff in the, uh, the you know, left, center, right, and the LFE, I keep that for off. And in the surrounds and the, the heights, I have them at mid and then the backs are set to far. And really what that means is the way this binaural kind of fold down works is when you pan something to the left, I kind of showed this a bit in that Ambio plugin that I was showing off the other day. Um, you won't hear it go directly to the left without anything in the right speaker because our ears hear if something, you know, if I'm listening to a snapping over here, my left ear is hearing it very quickly and very uh, with a lot of high end and stuff. But my right ear also hears it, but it hears it at a much lower level. It hears it with some phase anomalies uh, uh, that are because of the time it takes to get over here. And the frequency is drastically reduced. So I've got like a little bit of low end information with a very kind of short delay. But that's what my brain thinks is something right here versus right here or there. And these are the things that allow my brain or any of our brains to differentiate and localize things. If I have something close, it's got more high-end information basically. And if it's mid or even far, it's just a, a, a more natural way of, of giving depth to the binaural uh, settings. So I can go through and then uh, I've got those set for the bed and then any of these objects that I have uh, other things bus to or you know used, I can then set any of those objects however I want. That helps with the binaural breakdown. So why don't we check out another song and get into a bit of the drums and the room mics. What's great about Atmos is there's so many different ways to use it. What I've found doing this kind of rock record that has a band and drums and and uh, you know lots of guitars that we're I'm thinking of it basically as an extended stereo mix so I've got you know things that are in left and right and center vocals bass guitars some keyboards and stuff and then I've got all this space above me and behind me to kind of widen that by a, you know a, a great amount. Um, and then I can be moving a lot. Uh, we, we purposely um, recorded this knowing that we were going to be mixing in, in Atmos. When we were doing the drums, I had a lot of drum mics, uh, room mics around the room at Henson. So here... It's uh, six stereo pairs of room mics that are all in different places basically around me and, and a little bit above me. Let's see where these ones are. Basically, the sides about here. This is down low, left and right, down front. This is sides, low, back low, uh, also back low, and then these are front low. So these are basically just down here, just, just, just a little bit above. So there were a lot of room mics to use, which was great. It really helped fill out this space. So this is like all the direct close mics and the room mics. And those are basically just in the left and, and front as if kind of like a regular stereo. Okay, so I remember that, that little tail reverb. What's nice is you can get these 
these reverbs that uh So if you're in here, you'll hear that reverb kind of go like this, which is very nice. Once I get our mix and uh, we like it and we get our binaural settings kind of where we like them, it's time to print the mix. And basically we just print it in the renderer as a separate recorder. All these channels are being bussed into the renderer and recorded as a bed plus 128 objects. And it records all of them, whether or not it's being used or not. So it's a very big file. And then it's uh, encoded for playback on commercial Dolby encoders. So my 7.1.4 setup here will translate into any other playback system, no matter how many speakers it has, all the way down from headphones to a movie theater that might have, you know, 40 speakers. Uh, it's just scaled to the size, the amount of speakers. So in a big, big room, you're going to have more speakers. So there you go. It's it's hard to make this total immersive um, Atmos experience translate through your stereo computer speakers or whatever. But hopefully that gives you an idea of what's possible. When you're in the middle of it here, it really does feel immersive. I, you know, we use that word, but it's really true. And, you know... The possibilities are, are kind of endless, you know, right here we're taking a, a full multi-track uh, session and so we're able to put things wherever we want. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of overdubs and ear candy kind of things to play around with, so it gets really fun. Just as, as, as valid as a, as a more natural environment, uh, you know, either trying to sound like you're in a concert hall or in a, in a studio room. Uh, actually, Blue Note has uh, some amazing uh, Atmos mixes of uh, a bunch of classic Blue Note recordings that are just two tracks, maybe three tracks, because uh, that's what they were using in the you know early 60s. There's no rules, and that's one of the things that's most exciting about Atmos to me right now. Um, we're all still trying to figure it out, and so people can get really, really bold. And uh, I love the beginnings of technology because... People, you know, the, the the unlimited possibilities are kind of more apparent than after people have paved the way and started to define how things should be. You know, in the beginning, we're like kids just playing in a big sandbox and we can do whatever we want. So the sandbox is still way, wide open. So come in and play in the Dolby Atmos sandbox. Hope you enjoyed that. If you stuck around to the end, don't forget that you can get Dave Way's course with Louise Goffin, which features a huge amount of absolutely incredible musicians and Mr. Van Dyke Parks doing the string arrangements. So check that out. There is a link below as well. Thank you very much. So long, farewell, au revoir, adios, goodbye. <laughs>